Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Okay, so today I want to just have a bit of a chat about some of the experiments I've been doing with this uh, crystal filter. Um, firstly, um, the approach that I've taken here is definitely not the purest approach. Uh, and what I mean by that, um, you know, the purest and you know, arguably the probably the, the best way of designing a filter would be to uh, take the crystals to determine their characteristics in terms of the series and parallel capacitance, their resistance and the like, uh, and then to feed those parameters into um, some proper uh, filter design software such as the AADE and the like to then determine what um, the configuration needs to be by in, in returns of or in terms of the capacitors etc to make up the filter with the desired um, uh, profile in terms of the the, um, the passband. The approach I've taken is is a much simpler approach uh, in keeping with what I'm trying to do with this radio to sort of minimize the need for complexity. So um, as I mentioned with the sort of the thoughts and ideas video um, I was going to uh, try two different types of uh, filters one which used uh, matched um, matched filters, so again matched crystals in terms of their, uh, their frequency um, and then the other one was going to be just grabbing four out of the bag and, and see what the difference is. So I, I did that and I'll talk about that now and, and sort of where I got to but, but please just caveat that this is not the purest approach um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a way. So what I wanted to do, I wanted to do a cone filter so that's a filter where uh, in this particular configuration here, which is a fourth order filter, which is one, two, three, four crystals, is all the capacitors here are all the same value. So I uh, made up two filters this morning, um, one using uh, notionally the, the matched crystals uh, and one with the unmatched. And uh, I knew that the capacitance was going to be somewhere um, under uh, 100 odd picofarads, so I just notionally selected 47 picofarads. So I, I, I made them up, um, I then used the VNA to, to scope um, their response and I ended up with, for the matched set, a bandwidth of 4.3 kilohertz and for the unmatched set, 4.4 uh, kilohertz, so only 100 hertz difference um, between the two. So noting that, well, for all intents and purposes they were essentially the same, I thought, well I'll just go ahead and start playing around with the unmatched set. So I took that unmatched set and I thought, well, I'll need to increase the capacitance in order to decrease the uh, bandwidth. So I upped those capacitor values to 82 picofarads, uh, retested them and came out at 2.7 kilohertz, which is um, a pretty common bandwidth for an SSB um, crystal filter. So I'm going to stick with that. In other words, I'm going to stick with uh, 82 picofarads. Um, so... Before going any further, um, that's what we're seeing here. So what I've done here, and I'll talk about why there's a switch here later on, but at the moment, all we're looking at on the, the VNA down the bottom is this, this filter here. So it's a fourth order, so four crystals with 82 picofarad capacitors, uh, and that's the pass bend. Now, um, as you'll know, uh, it's, it's very important for crystal filters to be terminated uh, in the correct, um, I'm just going to talk about resistance. Um, and if you don't, then you really do affect the, the passband ripple. So what I have done in the past, and it seems to work okay for, for me, so I'm just going to continue doing it, again, right or wrong, uh, is to use two little trim pots here. So a couple of little trim pots here, these are 200 ohm pots. Um, I initially started with 500 and then decided that where things were sitting, 200 was going to be a better idea. So f at this point in time, they're sitting at 200 ohms, just uh, acting as series uh, resistance. And I'm also acknowledging and assuming uh, from the spec sheet that this VNA here has 50 ohms on the input uh, ports, or on both ports. So I've got already got 50 ohms um, here and here, and now I'm going to be adding this variable resistance and see what the effect is on the uh, on the plot, and that's exactly what I did. So I've just been tweaking those ever so slightly, and I'll just do one over here, and you can sort of see the the effect 
on the pass band there, the ripples start to increase now. And what I've done in the past is I just sort of quietly tweak it until I get a response which um, is never going to be dead flat, but is about right. I then will take that out of circuit, I'll measure it, add 50, and that'll become the design uh, resistance that I will um, design to when I do the input and output transformers, matching this filter to, uh, because of this particular radio, will be the uh, more likely the IF1 and IF2 on the IF strip. Um, so again, right or wrong, that's the approach I've taken. And you'll notice here on this particular filter, I just decided to uh, play around with uh, uh, joining the, the cases of those crystals to earth, um, and did see a, an ever so slight improvement, but really not a lot uh, in, the, um, in the attenuation or, or the stop band over here and here. Now it's just a little bit deeper. Not a huge amount, but a little bit. So what I'll probably do, um, and I'll, if I don't mention it later on in the video, um, I'll do the same thing over here when I do the final filter. Okay, so uh, what I then uh, decided to do was to have a, a quick look at this commercial filter, um, noting that this will be more than likely a higher order filter. So if I can just, if you just bear with me, I'm just going to throw this into the circuit, and more the point, I'll take the homebrew one out and just look at this. So that's now all we're looking at. And let me just change uh, the uh, recall recall two. So now I'm um, I'm scoping the the pass band of of that particular filter there, and straight away you can tell um, that uh, the the steepness of the skirts, the, the roll-off, is steeper in that particular filter there versus the fourth order, which makes perfect sense because more than likely there's probably going to be eight crystals in there, I, was, I suspect. Uh, in other words, a higher order filter than fourth. So, you know, eight, nine, I, I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, you can certainly see it here with the, um, the steeper roll-off of the skirts. So what that made me think, so, okay, well that's, that's, you know, that's, that's the commercial way of doing it, so why wouldn't I want to try and emulate that um, in the homebrew sense? So I shifted tack, and what I decided to do was um, move away from a fourth order filter and have a play with an eighth order filter. So what I've done now, I've just uh, reattached the VNA to this particular filter. Let me just go back to uh, recall, recall one, so I get the correct um, sweep. So now I'm still sweeping this, and you'll note these two switches here on the left hand position. So I am at the moment only looking at the uh, the pass band here of all the characteristics, or um, I've got the wrong wording there, but you know what I'm talking about, of this filter here. What I then did is I, I turned it into an 8th order filter. So I took the, the second 4th order filter, uh, disconnected its input um, circuitry, disconnected the output circuitry of the first one, joined them together, uh, added in an additional uh, capacitor to earth, which is required uh, in this particular configuration here, and turned it into an 8th order filter. So, if I now flick these two switches over, we are now looking at an eighth order filter, and as you can see straight away, the skirts there, or the roll-off um, of that filter is um, comparable, uh, if not the same, that's a bit of a bold statement, but um, certainly comparable with the commercial filter. Um, I I'm not going to talk about the insertion loss, uh, because of these series resistors here will, will have quite an effect on that, but um, suffice to say, uh, in this configuration here, all things being equal, um, if you look at the, oh, what have I got here, so let me just put my glasses on, let me just move that little cursor there to the centre of the pass band, so we're looking at sort of minus 12 dB, minus 12.7, if I was to flick back to the fourth order, now it's pretty well the same, 11.67, so within a dB um, of each other, so uh, that's that's good. Anyway, so um, where so where I got to is um, I I think I will 
and there's no reason why I shouldn't, um, stick with an eighth order filter for the rig that we're building. Um, you can see there I've, I've tweaked these, those two trim pots on the input and the output to get a response which is, you know, while it's not a brick wall one, it's, it's, it's close enough uh, for me um, and I will give that a go in the rig. Um, so moving forward, I don't think there's anything else I wanted to cover off in this, probably not actually. So moving forward, my plan now is to uh, take everything off these two boards, uh, make one board which will house all eight uh, crystals, um, solder back in those capacitors, um, I'll remove that, measure it, add 50 and that'll become the design for the transformers and same on the output, it should be the same. Uh, and that will be that. Um, and I think I just mentioned earlier on, what I'll also do uh, is just very, very lightly sandpaper the corners there and I'll attach all of those cases to earth. Uh, it's easy enough to do, just got to be very careful we don't um, overheat these. Um, so I don't want to, uh, from a thermal point of view, uh, warp or otherwise the internal uh, crystal holder. So I'll be very careful I don't apply too much heat to that while I'm doing that process. But that should, there's a reason why not, it's easy enough to do. Uh, will just help uh, a little bit more uh, in the stop band in terms of the, uh, the attenuation there. Okay, Dave, I think that's about all I'm going to pass on there. Uh, for interest sake, um, these divisions are 10 dB, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 50 odd dB there. Um, I'm not quite sure if I'm actually nibbling into uh, the limitations on the VNA. I don't think I am, but um, I think for a, a homebrew filter, uh, not using the, the traditional design software approach, uh, it's not looking too bad. So that's what I'm going to stick with, and that's what I'll have a play with, and we will go from there. Okay, cheers all. Um, any questions, sing out. Um, I won't necessarily have the answers, but we'll give it a go. Okay, stay safe, be good. <laughs> As I say to the kids, and uh, we will see you soon.